I want to go over stability and the inverted pendulum and just a quick review that when we have a transfer function and we look at the poles if there's any pole that has a real part that is greater than or equal to zero like here here and here it will be unstable um, as long as the real part of a complex pole is less than zero it should be stable all right let's now do the inverted pendulum here is the transfer equation for the inverted pendulum and it's just really the phase angle of of it um, deviates from standing straight up and this is the position of the cart and it's um, this is the proper equation and yeah it's negative if I pull the cart to the right a pendulum will kind of go in the opposite direction so let's uh, do our control theory and put it into our QS equation where we have the transfer function divided by 1 plus um, our proposed feedback and if we work through the algebra what we will see is we have s squared right, divided by minus L and then I have s squared 1 plus uh, some unknown transfer function divided by L minus G divided by L alright now there is a rule to help us in that any nth order polynomial has at least one non-negative real root if one of the coefficients of a lower order is missing so for a second order if I have s squared plus 10 the s is missing right so it'll be unstable yeah, I have s squared plus s the constant term or s to the 0 is missing so both of these will have some positive root or root equal to 0 and so will be unstable now let's keep that in mind as we try proportional alone proportional derivative or proportional integral so we first we substitute the GS for K and notice we have S squared plus something times S squared and then we have minus uh, gravity over the length of the rod well the S part is still missing right because we would just combine these S squared terms to one plus K divided by L we'd have minus G over L but there is no S term so this can't be made stable no matter what values of K we choose now what about proportional times the derivative all right we'll substitute GS for KS and we get K divided by L times S cubed so I have an S cubed term an S squared term still the S um, the S term is missing and then we have our constant term so this can't be made stable all right now we put in K divided by S the integral we have S squared minus G over L K divided by L S oh now this is interesting I have S squared I have S and I have S to the zero can this be made stable let's find out so I just rewrote the equation here and now let's look at the roots all right which is where the um, that it's the poles but I just dragged this equation out so I have minus K divided by L right K divided by L squared minus 4 times minus GL divided by 2 because so I'm just concerned about this part right here well that minus times a minus gives me a 4g divided by L and we'll notice that the square root of this will the you know the positive end will always be greater than this and so there will always be one positive root and thus it's 
um, unstable. Now we can also look th at this uh, in another way and this is the Descartes method. Um, I looked up how to pronounce it. It's French and I'll leave it there. So all you gotta do is here take the characteristic polynomial and to find the number of positive real roots substitute s equals one and just count the sign changes. So one squared is one k divided by l times one we get that and then minus gl is unchanged so it's positive positive negative one sign change so if k is greater than zero this is positive there's one sign change one positive root unstable now what if k is less than zero well, I have 1, then I would have minus, minus, so there's still one sign change, and so it's going to be unstable. So even though this was promising and very, you know, kind of simple to look at, um, nope, it's not going to make that uh, inverted pendulum stable. So now let's investigate proportional plus integral. And yeah, why will I not investigate proportional plus S? Um, because there'll still be a missing term. So I'm going to put this into the equation for GS. And um, you can look at the algebra but I get, I still keep an S squared term, okay, but I get, um, when I multiply through, I will also get an S term, so K2 divided, uh, K2 divided by S times S squared is K2S. So if we look here, um, I've manipulated the characteristic equation where I have 1 plus k1 divided by L, all right, times s squared, k2 divided by s, okay, minus gl. All right, so I have all three terms, and it looks like I have constants that I can manipulate out here. There's no menacing coefficients. I can't really control this, right? and length is going to be positive and gravity is going to be negative. Um, so how do I pre prevent this sign change? Well, I have the one squared is still one, one. Well, what if I made these two both negative? It would be negative, negative, negative. There'd be no sign change. How do I make that? One plus K1 divided by L is less than zero or K1 divided by L is less than negative one. This just has to be negative. All the terms will be negative and there will be no sign change. Um, and yeah, you can now, because you have a K1 and a K2, you can not, on, not only can you make it stable, but you can make it over, under, or critically damped uh, however you like. Mm -hmm.